Qualifying has always been an intrinsic part of Formula One. It's the one time across the race weekend that we get to see the cars at full performance, and it allows the drivers to really test their metal. Despite the fact that countless historic moments in Formula One have occurred in qualifying, it has never afforded points or counted towards the championship. But what if it did? Indeed, what if it did exclusively? In this universe, Sunday does not exist, and we're going to see how each season would unfold if points were awarded just for qualifying, and finally answer the question once and for all of who really are the best drivers over one lap. So, the rules. I'm going to apply the same point system that each season used, and I will take into account grid penalties for things like dangerous driving or ignoring yellow flags in qualifying and practice, and I will include disqualifications and exclusions from qualifying for technical infringements, but I will not include grid penalties for things such as engine and gearbox changes or bringing the car out of park ferme, or for incidents in previous races, as for the sake of this timeline, there is no grid to be penalised for and those races never happened. I will also be discounting the sprint qualifying sessions as seen in 2023. With that out of the way, let's get started and head back to 1950. The inaugural Formula One World Championship of Drivers included just seven races, one of which was the Indianapolis 500, which was sanctioned by the American Automobile Association instead of the FIA, run to different regulations, and in the 10 years it was on the Formula One calendar saw fewer than 10 drivers make the jump from the Indianapolis 500 to Formula One, or vice versa. Formula One was far less highly regulated at the time, but the standard format for qualifying was to have one session on Friday and another on Saturday with no fuel restrictions, though Monaco did buck this trend slightly as the first session was on the Thursday and decided the top five positions, and the second session on the Saturday would decide the remaining positions, even if their lap times were faster. The point system at the time afforded 8 points for a win, 6 for second, 4 for third, 3 for fourth, 2 for fifth, and 1 point for fastest lap regardless of where or if you finished, and only the best 4 results from the 7 races counted towards each driver's points tally. Alfa Romeo were the team to beat at the time, having dominated pre- and post-war Grand Prix racing, and had so little competition for their main rivals Ferrari, Talbot Largo and Maserati that they treated each race as little more than demonstration runs. It was three-time Italian Grand Prix champion Giuseppe Farina who came out on top to beat teammate Juan Manuel Fangio by three points, with three wins each. In qualifying, however, Fangio had four pole positions to Farina's two, and so the inaugural title now goes to him by four points. Indy 500 winner Johnny Parsons jumps from sixth to fourth, despite losing his fastest lap point, and fourth place Louis Rosier goes from scoring 13 points to zero, having never qualified any higher than sixth. Prince Beera, Peter Whitehead and Louis Chiron all also plummet out of the top ten. In 1951, only the best four results from the eight races counted. Alfa Romeo saw a closer challenge from Ferrari and Farina was unable to defend his title and it went to Fangio by six points from Alberto Ascari. In qualifying, Fangio defends the title with four pole positions and takes it by eight points from Ascari. Farina takes third from Jose Froelen Gonzalez and Indy 500 pole scissor Duke Nalen jumps up to sixth. Formula 1 was run to Formula 2 regulations in 1952, and with Alfa Romeo's withdrawal it was dominated by Ferrari and Alberto Ascari, who won 6 of the 8 races and took the title by 12 points from Giuseppe Farina. In qualifying, with 5 pole positions, it still goes to Ascari, but by only 4 points from Farina. In 1953, the best 4 results from 9 races counted. Ferrari and Ascari continued to dominate, and Ascari took his second title by 6.5 points from a returning Juan Manuel Fangio. In qualifying, with 6 pole positions, he takes the title again by only 4 points, and as per the rules loses almost half of his total points tally. In 1954, the best 5 results from 9 races counted. Formula 1 regulations returned, and with this came the debuts of Mercedes and Van Wall. Juan Manuel Fangio drove for both Maserati and Mercedes across the season and won his second title by 16 and 6 sevenths of a point from Jose Frollon Gonzalez, with the sevenths coming from the fact that seven different drivers set an identical fastest lap time at the British Grand Prix, so the point was divided equally. In qualifying, with five pole positions, Fangio takes his third title by 11 points from Gonzalez. 
Maurice Trintignant plummets from 4th to 11th, and Sterling Moss jumps from 13th to 5th. Argentine Onofre Marimon jumps from 14th to 10th, despite the fact he was killed at the German Grand Prix and so became the third driver killed behind the wheel of a Formula 1 car and the first Formula 1 driver killed at a Grand Prix weekend. In 1955, the best five results from seven races counted. Fangio and Mercedes dominated with the innovative W196 Streamliner, and Fangio took his third title by 17 points from new teammate Sterling Moss. However, the season was marred with tragedy by the deaths of Alberto Ascari in a testing crash at Monza, Mauro Alboghetti at the non-championship PAL Grand Prix, Manny Ayulo in practice for the Indy 500, and two-time winner Bill Vukovic in the race itself. But most critically, it also saw the Le Mans disaster which saw the deaths of over 80 spectators and Formula 1 driver Pierre Levey, the subsequent cancellation of the French, German, Spanish and Swiss Grand Prix, the withdrawal of Mercedes as a constructor at the end of the season, who would not return as such until 2010, the suspension of all motorsport events in Switzerland until the Zurich e in 2018, and the abandonment of Circuit Bremgarten in Switzerland and Soquito de Pedralbes in Spain. In qualifying, Fangio got three pole positions from the seven races that took place and wins his fourth title by eight points from Moss. Clearly not a strong qualifier, Maurice Trintignant goes from finishing fourth to failing to score a single point. The late Alberto Ascari skyrockets up to fourth, and Jose Froelen Gonzalez only raced in the Argentine Grand Prix but goes from 17th to 7th. In 1956, the best five results from eight races counted. With the withdrawal of Mercedes, Fangio moved to Ferrari and won his fourth title by three points from former teammate Sterling Moss. In qualifying, with six pole positions, he wins his fifth title by 14 points from Eugenio Castellotti, who jumps up from sixth, and Moss, Peter Collins and Jean Beira all drop one place. Fangio moved to Maserati in 1957 and dominated once again to win his fifth driver's title by 15 points from Moss once again, a record he would hold for the next 46 years. In qualifying, with four pole positions, he takes his sixth title by six points. Jean Beira skyrockets from 11th to 3rd, Peter Collins goes from 9th to 5th, and Luigi Musso plummets from 3rd to 9th. In 1958, the best six results from ten races counted. The semi-retirement of Fangio and withdrawal of Maserati created a void that was filled by Ferrari and Van Wall, and Ferrari driver Mike Hawthorne took the title by just one point from Van Wall driver Sterling Moss after Moss appealed to have Hawthorne's disqualification at the Portuguese Grand Prix overturned, and Hawthorne then immediately retired from racing and was killed in a car accident three months later. In qualifying, with four pole positions, Hawthorne keeps the title, now by four points. Roy Salvadori drops from 4th to 11th, the late Peter Collins and Harry Shell drop from 5th and 6th respectively to 7th and 8th, Stuart Lewis Evans posthumously dumps from 9th to 4th following his death after the Moroccan Grand Prix, Jean Beira jumps from 11th to 5th, Maurice Trintignant drops like a stone from 7th to 17th, the late Luigi Musso goes from 8th to 6th, and in semi-retirement Fangio goes from 14th to 9th. 1958 also saw the inaugural Constructors' Championship. At the time, only the highest finishing driver from each Constructors' result in each race was counted, and only the best six results counted. Van Wall were the inaugural Constructors' Champions, beating Ferrari by eight points. In qualifying, this is reduced to just two points. BRM also take third from Cooper, and Connaught take seventh from Porsche. In 1959, the best five results from nine races counted. The rear-engined revolution took place and Jack Brabham won the title by four points from Tony Brooks. In qualifying, with four pole positions, Sterling Moss at long last gets his title, beating Brabham by six points. Phil Hill drops from fourth to eighth, Maurice Trintignant drops from fifth to tenth, and Jean Beira jumps from 18th to fourth, despite losing his life in a sports car race in Germany. Cooper took the Constructors' title by 8 points from Ferrari, and now take it by 9 points. So, 
In the 1950s, there are drastic changes to the championship results, but relatively little to the champions themselves, with Juan Manuel Fangio taking the 1950 title from Giuseppe Farina and Sterling Moss taking the 1959 title from Jack Brabham and the two Constructors titles remaining unchanged. In 1960, the best six results from 10 races counted and the fastest lap point was abolished and replaced with a point for sixth place. Jack Brabham and Cooper dominated again and Brabham took his second title by nine points from teammate Bruce McLaren. In qualifying, with three pole positions, he takes his first title by three points from Sterling Moss, who got four pole positions, and McLaren plummets from second to 14th. Graham Hill jumps from 15th to 3rd, and Olivier Gendebian, Wolfgang von Tripps, Jim Rathman, Richie Ginther and Jim Clark all drop out of the top 10. Cooper won the Constructors' title again by 14 points from Lotus, and now win it by just 2 points. BRM more than triple their points score and take 3rd from Ferrari. For 1961, the race winner was now awarded 9 points instead of 8, though it remained as 8 for the Constructors. It went back down to the best 5 results counting, and the Indianapolis 500 was removed from the calendar. Phil Hill became the first American champion, beating Ferrari teammate Wolfgang von Trips by 1 point, who had been the favourite most of the season until his death at the Italian Grand Prix. In qualifying, with 5 pole positions, Hill's margin increases to a rather more comfortable 15 points. Richie Ginther takes third from Sterling Moss, and Dan Gurney, Inners Ireland, Bruce McLaren, Giancarlo Baghetti, and Tony Brooks all drop out of the top 10. Ferrari took their first Constructors title by 8 points from Lotus, which now increases to 18 points, and Porsche dropped from 3rd to 5th. For 1962, the Constructors were also given an extra point for a win. Graham Hill won the first title for BRM by 12 points from Jim Clark, but in qualifying, with six pole positions, it now goes to Clark by 12 points, and defending champion Phil Hill drops from 6th to 11th. BRM beat Lotus in the Constructors' Championship by 6 points, but in qualifying, it now goes to Lotus by 12 points again. Cooper lose 3rd to Lola, and Ferrari lose 6th to Brabham. The best six results counted in 1963. Jim Clark blew everyone out of the water to score almost double the points of defending champion Graham Hill, which was almost triple when including all results. In qualifying, with seven pole positions, Clark takes his second title by 12 points from Hill, and Richie Ginther drops from third to sixth. A comfortable win for Lotus in the Constructors' battle of 18 points over BRM decreases to 12 points, and Ferrari take third from Brabham. A closely fought title battle in 1964 went to John Surtees by just one point, despite the fact that Graham Hill scored more points across the season. In qualifying, however, Surtees drops to third and Jim Clark takes his third consecutive title with five pole positions. Hill drops from second to fourth, Richie Ginther drops from fifth to tenth, and Dan Gurney jumps from sixth to second. Ferrari won the Constructors title by three points from BRM, but now Ferrari and BRM are overtaken by Lotus and Brabham, and Lotus take their third consecutive Constructors title by nine points. Most of 1965 was dominated by Jim Clark, who still clinched his second title by 14 points from Graham Hill despite a few dodgy races at the end. In qualifying, with six pole positions, title number two for Clark becomes title number four by eight points from Hill. Bruce McLaren drops out of the top ten after failing to score a single point. Lotus's Constructors' victory margin over BRM decreases from nine points to six. Ferrari take third from Brabham, and the once mighty Cooper drop from fifth to seventh with zero points. Jack Brabham made history in 1966 by winning his third title with his own car. It went back to being the best five results that counted, and he beat John Surtees by 14 points. In qualifying, however, an incredibly close fight goes to Surtees with two pole positions, taking the title from Jim Clark by just two points, who himself is only one point ahead of Brabham. Brabham won the Constructors' title by 11 points from Ferrari, which they now lose to them by four points. There was a big change to the way points were tallied in 1967. 
As the season had now grown quite a lot in length since 1950, the best nine results would be taken from 11 races, with five from the first six and four from the last five. Consistency allowed Denny Holm to beat his boss Jack Brabham to the title by five points. In qualifying, however, with six pole positions, Jim Clark takes his fifth title by 17 points from Graham Hill, and Holm plummets to fifth. Dan Gurney jumps from 8th to 4th, and Lorenzo Bandini posthumously takes 9th following his death at the Monaco Grand Prix. Brabham won the Constructors' battle comfortably with 19 points over Lotus, but now it unsurprisingly goes to Lotus by 22 points, and Eagle shoots up from 7th to 3rd. For 1968, it was the best five results from the first and last six races that counted. Graham Hill won his second title that year by 12 points from Jackie Stewart, but in qualifying, with three pole positions, it remarkably goes to Chris Amon by a very comfortable 13 points. Jochen Rint as well jumps up to third. Lotus won the Constructors' title by 13 points from McLaren as some consolation for the death of Jim Clark early in the season, but it now goes to Ferrari by just three points from Lotus and Brabham skyrocket from eighth to third. For 1969, it went back to the best five results from the first half and the best four from the second half that counted. Jackie Stewart dominated to win his first title by 26 points from Jackie Ix. In qualifying, with five pole positions, it now goes to Jochen Rint by 12 points, and Bruce McLaren, clearly not a strong qualifier, plummets from 3rd to 10th. Matra won their sole constructors title by 17 points from Brabham, but this now goes to Lotus by 10 points, and Ferrari take 5th from BRM. So, in the 1960s, things are turned on their head. Jack Brabham loses his third title to John Surtees, Graham Hill loses both his titles to Jim Clark and Chris Amon, Denny Holm loses his title to Jim Clark, Jackie Stewart loses his first title to Jochen Rint, and Clark goes from being a two-time champion to a five-time champion. On the constructors' front, BRM and Matra lose their titles to Lotus, Ferrari lose the 1964 title to Lotus but take their 1968 title from them and the 1966 title from Brabham, and Brabham also lose the 1967 title to Lotus. For 1970, six of the first seven races and five of the last six races were counted. This was the year famous for the dominance of Jochen Rint, who was so far ahead when he was killed at the Italian Grand Prix that nobody could catch him in the remaining races, and he became Formula 1's first and so far only posthumous world champion. In qualifying, Rint gets to enjoy a year as defending champion before his untimely death, but the title ends up being between Jackie Stewart and Jackie Ix and goes to Stewart by 6 points. Lotus won the Constructors' title by 7 points over Ferrari, but they now drop to 3rd, and Ferrari win it by 11 points over Rookie's March. In 1971, 5 of the first 6 races and 4 of the last 5 races counted. Jackie Stewart dominated to beat Ronnie Peterson by 29 points. In qualifying, with 6 pole positions, Stewart now wins it by 28 points from Jackie Ix. Clay Regazzoni jumps from 7th to 3rd, and Chris Amon jumps from 11th to 5th. Tyrrell's gigantic 37-point winning margin over BRM in the Constructors' battle is reduced to a 13-point lead over Ferrari, and March dropped from 4th to 7th. In 1972, it went back to 5 of the first 7 races and 5 of the last 6 counting. The Lotus of Emerson Fittipaldi toppled defending champion Jackie Stewart to take his first title by 16 points. In qualifying, with three pole positions, he takes the title by just three points from Jackie Ix, who finishes runner-up for the third year in a row. Lotus won the Constructors' title by 10 points from Tyrrell, but it now goes to Ferrari by 13 points from Lotus. For 1973, seven of the first eight races and six of the last seven races counted. Jackie Stewart comfortably won his third and final title by 16 points from defending champion Emerson Fittipaldi, despite withdrawing for the final race after the untimely death of his teammate Francois Sever. In qualifying, with nine pole positions, it's an utter bloodbath by Ronnie Peterson, who takes the title by 48 points from Stewart. Lotus won the Constructors' battle in real life despite not taking the driver's title by 10 points from Tyrrell, and this now increases to 46 points. 
BRM jumped from 7th to 4th. Emerson Fittipaldi won his second title in 1974, this time with McLaren by only three points from Clay Regazzoni. In qualifying, with nine pole positions, Nicky Lauda responds to Peterson's challenge and beats Clay Regazzoni to the title by 52 points. In the Constructors' battle, McLaren won the title by eight points from Ferrari, but Ferrari now win it by a colossal 61 points from them. In 1975, it was six of the first and last seven races that counted. Nicky Lauda came through to comfortably win his first title by 19.5 points from defending champion Emerson Fittipaldi in what was also the first year to have shortened races where half points were awarded. In qualifying, Lauda puts his foot down again with nine pole positions and wins his second title by 62 points from Carlos Paz. Emerson Fittipaldi and Carlos Reutemann dropped from second and third respectively to sixth and fifth. Ferrari's 18.5 point victory margin over Brabham in the Constructors' Championship increases to 41 points, and Shadow go from 6th to 3rd. For 1976, seven each of the first and last eight races counted. Immortalised by the 2013 movie Rush, 1976 saw an epic battle between the focused, calculating, defending champion Nicky Lauda and the abrasive, womanising James Hunt. Hunt eventually took the title by one point after Lauda made a miracle recovery after his near death at the Nürburgring and then voluntarily retired at the final round. In qualifying, with eight pole positions, Hunt takes the title by 29 points, meaning even without his absence, Lauda couldn't beat him. Ferrari won the Constructors' title by nine points from McLaren, but McLaren now win it by 21 points. For 1977, Eight of the first nine and seven of the last eight races counted. Nicky Lauda dominated to win his second title by 17 points from Jody Schechter with two rounds to spare, which he sat out due to his deteriorating relationship with Ferrari. In qualifying, Lauda drops to fourth and Hunt defends the title with five pole positions by just one point from Mario Andretti. Jody Schechter drops from second to fifth and John Watson skyrockets from 13th to third. Ferrari won the Constructors' title by 33 points from Lotus, but they also dropped to fourth, and McLaren beat Lotus to the title by just one point. In 1978, seven each of the first and last eight races counted. This was the year that heralded the ground effect era, where Lotus improves upon the pioneering Venturi tunnels and side skirts of the Type 78 with the Type 79, which gave Mario Andretti the title by 13 points over late teammate Ronnie Peterson, leaving all other teams scrambling to come up with similar designs of their own. In qualifying, with eight pole positions, Andretti now wins it by an extremely comfortable 46 points and becomes the first driver to break the 100-point barrier. Patrick Depaillet also plummets from 5th to 15th. Lotus's Constructors' title winning margin of 28 points over Ferrari increases to 46 points over Brabham. For 1979, only 8 races counted, with the best 4 from the first 7 and also from the last 8. In the Constructors' Championship, however, results from all drivers from every race were now counted. Ferrari had perfected their own ground effect design which allowed Jody Schechter to take the title by four points from teammate Gilles Villeneuve. In qualifying, with four pole positions, it instead goes to the Ligier of Jacques Lafitte and Schechter slumps to fifth. Jean-Pierre Jabouille in the turbocharged Renault skyrockets from 13th to 2nd and Clay Regazzoni drops from 5th to 10th. Ferrari's 38-point constructors lead over Williams with all drivers' results now counting becomes a two-point margin of victory for Ligier over Renault. So, in the 1970s, there are some significant changes once again. Jochen Rint and Jody Schechter both lose their titles. Jackie Stewart loses his third title to Ronnie Peterson, Emerson Fittipaldi loses his second title to Lauda, and Lauda loses his second title to Hunt. Ferrari take two Constructors' titles from Lotus, but also lose three to McLaren and Ligier. For 1980, five of the first and also last seven races counted. Alan Jones became the first champion for Williams, beating Nelson Piquet by 13 points. In qualifying, with three pole positions, he keeps the title by just one point from René Arnoux. Jean-Pierre Jabouille jumped from 8th to 3rd. 
Williams beat Ligier in the Constructors' Championship by 54 points, but Renault now beat Williams to it by just 3 points. Alfa Romeo also jumped from 11th to 5th. From 1981, the best 11 races counted from any part of the season. An incredibly close fight ended with Nelson Piquet taking the title by just one point from Carlos Reutemann, with only seven points separating the top five drivers. In qualifying, Reutemann scores more points overall, but Piquet still wins it by one point, with four pole positions. René Arnoux also jumps from ninth to third. Williams won their second consecutive Constructors title by 34 points from Brabham, but they now lose it to Renault by 6 points. 1982 was one of the most competitive seasons in Formula 1 history, with no one driver winning more than two races, but it was also marred by the deaths of Gilles Villeneuve and Riccardo Poletti. It was eventually won by Keke Rosberg, beating Didier Peroni by 5 points who suffered career-ending injuries in a crash in Germany. In qualifying, Renault teammates Alain Prost and René Arnaud both score 77 points and get 5 pole positions, 4 second places and 2 third places, but Prost has 2 fourth places to Arnaud's 1, so he gets the title. Rosberg drops all the way to 6th with just a single pole position. Ferrari won the Constructors' title by 5 points from McLaren, but it now unsurprisingly goes to Renault by 98 points from Ferrari. Brabham jumped from 7th to 3rd, and Alfa Romeo jumped from 10th to 4th. Ground effect came to an end in 1983, and Nelson Piquet took his second title by only two points from Alain Prost. In qualifying, with four pole positions, it now goes to Patrick Tombe, beating Ferrari teammate René Arnoux by two points. Piquet drops to 4th, and Riccardo Petrese jumps from 9th to 5th. Ferrari won the Constructors' title by 10 points from Renault, despite René Arnoux and Patrick Tombe finishing 3rd and 4th, and they now beat Brabham by 70 points, and Lotus jumped from 8th to 4th. 1984 saw a close battle between Alain Prost and Nicky Lauda at McLaren that ended with Lauda making history by taking his third title by just half a point, courtesy of half points being awarded at Monaco. In qualifying, with 9 pole positions, Nelson Piquet takes his second title by 16 points from Prost, and Lauda drops like a stone all the way down to 10th. McLaren's colossal 86-point lead over Ferrari in the Constructors' Championship is reduced to just 2 points over Brabham, and Ferrari drops a 5th. Alain Prost won his first title in 1985 by 20 points from Michele Alboreto. In qualifying, with 7 pole positions, it instead goes to Ayrton Senna by 24 points from Keke Rosberg, in only his second season in Formula 1. McLaren won their second consecutive Constructors title by a relatively narrow 8 points from Ferrari, but it now goes to Lotus by 7 points from Williams. The title went to Alain Prost again in 1986 after a titanic three-way fight with Nelson Piquet and Nigel Mansell, with Mansell famously being taken out of the fight in the last race by a tyre blowout. Prost beat Mansell by two points to take his second consecutive title, but in qualifying, with eight pole positions, it goes to Senna once again by 18 points from Piquet, and Prost drops to fourth. A dominant victory margin for Williams of 45 points in the Constructors' Championship over McLaren increases to 46 points over Lotus, and Ferrari and Benetton swap positions. Nelson Piquet won his third title in 1987 by 12 points after teammate Nigel Mansell injured his back with two rounds to go. In qualifying, with eight pole positions, it goes very comfortably to Mansell by 22 points. That year, the Jim Clark Trophy was also awarded to the handful of drivers running naturally aspirated engines, which was comfortably won by Jonathan Palmer by 21 points from Philippe Strife, which now goes to Philippe Alio by 14 points. In the Constructors' Championship, Williams maintained their dominant Constructors' win with their 61-point margin over McLaren increasing to a colossal 137 points over Lotus. In 1988, 
The increasingly large number of teams and drivers on the entry list of each race meant early morning pre-qualifying was introduced for the slowest teams, with the fastest four qualifying for qualifying itself against the remaining 26 drivers to determine who would make the 26-car grid. It also saw the start of the infamous Senna Prost rivalry, who were battling miles ahead of the rest of the grid in the all-conquering McLaren MP44. Senna eventually took his first title by three points from Prost, despite Prost scoring more points overall. In qualifying, with a record-breaking 13 pole positions, Senna takes his third title by 27 points. McLaren unsurprisingly monopolised the Constructors' Championship and a 134-point lead decreases ever so slightly to 132 points and Williams jump from 7th to 3rd. The Senna-Prost rivalry intensified in 1989, and after unsuccessfully running into Senna at Suzuka and taking himself out, Prost won his third title by 16 points after Senna won the race but then got disqualified for incorrectly rejoining the track. In this timeline, of course, no such collision takes place, and with 13 pole positions once again, Senna takes title number 4 by 27 points from Prost once again, and Gerhard Berger goes from 7th to 3rd. A dominant Constructors' victory for McLaren goes from a 64-point lead over Williams to a 137-point lead over Ferrari. Pierluigi Martini's heroics in the final few races give Minardi a shock 5th place, and Lotus plummet from 6th to 11th. So, in the 1980s, things again are quite different. Patrick Tombe and Nigel Mansell are new champions, Nicky Lauter and Keke Rosberg lose their titles, Prost and Piquet both lose two titles and gain another, but the real star of the show is Ayet and Senna, who gains three titles, all in very impressive fashion. Renault start the decade with three consecutive Constructors titles, and Lotus take the 1985 title from McLaren. The Senna-Prost rivalry reached its zenith in 1990, as Senna got his own back against Prost at Suzuka, this time by punting him off and claiming his second title by seven points. In qualifying, such a collision also never takes place, and with ten pole positions Senna takes title number five by 28 points from new teammate Gerhard Berger, and Prost drops to fourth without a single pole position. An 11-point win over Ferrari for McLaren in the Constructors' Championship becomes an 87-point win, and Pierluigi Martini's front-row start at Phoenix gives Minardi 6th. Nineteen ninety one saw the first points change in ten years, as an extra point was given for first, and finally, at long last, all race results counted. Senna won his third title in a very convincing fashion by 24 points from Nigel Mansell. In qualifying, with 8 pole positions, title number 3 for Senna becomes title number 6 by 34 points from Riccardo Patrese. McLaren won their fourth consecutive Constructors title, originally by 14 points and now by 15, and Jordan dropped from 5th to 8th. Nineteen ninety two was the year that technical innovation in Formula One reached its peak, with Williams leading the pack with their FW fourteen B with its traction control, launch control, ABS, active suspension, and onboard telemetry, allowing Nigel Mansell to storm his way to the title, fifty two points ahead of teammate Ricardo Patrese. In qualifying, with fourteen pole positions from sixteen races, it's a total wipeout by Mansell, who takes the title by sixty-four points from Patrese, who between them lock out the front row in twelve of the sixteen races. Williams' winning margin over McLaren in the constructors' championship goes from sixty-five points to one hundred and twenty-two points, and they concede just twenty-four points. A large drop in the number of participating teams in 1993 meant that pre-qualifying was no longer necessary. Williams replicated their success from 1992, this time with Alain Prost who won his fourth title by 26 points from Ayet and Senna. In qualifying, with 13 pole positions, this becomes his second title by 57 points from teammate Damon Hill, 11 years after his first. Williams' 84-point lead over McLaren in the Constructors' Championship increases dramatically to 166 points, going from exactly double McLaren's points to just shy of triple. 1994 was the year that Formula One speed finally caught up with it, marred by the deaths of Ayet and Senna and Roland Ratzenberger and serious injuries for Carl Wendlinger and Andrea Montemini. 
A season dominated by Michael Schumacher and the suspiciously fast Benetton B194 went down to the wire after he was disqualified from two races and banned from two others, and a collision with Damon Hill at Adelaide gave him the title by one point. In qualifying, with six pole positions, he takes it by a markedly more comfortable 21 points. Senna posthumously takes fifth, and with no races taking place, just use your imagination regarding his death, and Hakkinen drops from fourth to seventh. Williams beat Benetton to the Constructors' title by 15 points, and they now win it by 37 points. There was another intense fight between Damien Hill and Michael Schumacher in 1995, including a few more collisions between them. Several errors from Hill meant Schumacher won his second title by 33 points. In qualifying, with seven pole positions, it now goes to Hill by 11 points. Benetton won the Constructors' title by 25 points, but this now goes to Williams 2 by a very comfortable 97 points. 1996 saw the first major shake-up to the qualifying format since Formula 1's inception. Instead of two sessions held on Friday and Saturday respectively, there would now be one one-hour-long session on Saturday in which each driver was allotted 12 laps to set their best time. Williams were back on top again, and Damon Hill took his first title by 19 points from rookie teammate Jacques Villeneuve. In qualifying, with nine pole positions, Hill takes his second title by 45 points from Michael Schumacher. A trouncing by Williams, where they won the Constructors' title by 105 points from Ferrari, increases to 116 points, and Ligier losing their Monaco win means they drop from 6th to 9th. 1997 saw a season-long battle between Jacques Villeneuve and Michael Schumacher that culminated in another title-deciding collision that saw Schumacher excluded from the championship and Villeneuve crowned champion by 39 points from Heinz Held Frentzen and 3 points ahead of Schumacher. In qualifying, with no such collision taking place, there is no disqualification, and with 10 pole positions, Villeneuve still takes the title by 51 points from Schumacher, and David Coulthard plummets from 3rd to 8th. Williams' most recent Constructors' victory goes from a 21-point gap to Ferrari to a 111-point gap, and McLaren take third from Benetton. In 1998, there was a tense battle between Mika Hakkinen and Michael Schumacher. The battle went down to the wire and was won by Hakkinen by 14 points. In qualifying, with nine pole positions, Hakkinen takes the title by 36 points from teammate David Coulthard, and Schumacher drops to third with just three pole positions. McLaren won their first Constructors' title in seven years by 23 points from Ferrari, which now becomes 103 points, and Benetton take fourth from Jordan. Michael Schumacher attempted to come back at Mika Hakkinen in 1999, but this was cut short by him breaking his leg at Silverstone and missing seven races. Hakkinen five times retired from pole and saw a strong challenge from Eddie Irvine and Heinz Harald Frentzen, but came through to take his second title by two points from Irvine. In qualifying, with 11 pole positions, he breezes to the title by 55 points from Coulthard, and Irvine drops all the way to fifth, behind Schumacher. Ferrari took their first Constructors' title in 16 years by just 4 points from McLaren, but McLaren now win that by 100 points. So, in the 90s, things are by and large the same, aside from Damon Hill taking the 1995 title from Michael Schumacher and Benetton losing their 1995 Constructors' title to Williams. In 2000, Schumacher finally managed to topple McLaren and Mika Hakkinen and took his third driver's title and Ferrari's first in 21 years by 19 points from Hakkinen. In qualifying, with nine pole positions, Schumacher takes his second title by 25 points and Jarno Trulli jumps from 10th to 5th. Ferrari won the Constructors as well by 18 points, but McLaren now win it by 7 points and Trulli's efforts take Jordan from 6th to 3rd. Schumacher took his fourth title with ease in 2001 by 58 points from David Coulthard. In qualifying, with 11 pole positions, he takes his third title by 62 points from brother Ralph. Ferrari won their third consecutive Constructors' title by 77 points from McLaren, which now becomes their first Constructors' title in 18 years by 54 points from Williams. 
Ferrari, Williams and McLaren's near total monopoly of the front three rows means Prost in their final year go from 9th to 5th. Schumacher raised the bar even higher in 2002 and set a new record by finishing on the podium in every race and won his fifth driver's title by 67 points from teammate Rubens Barrichello with six rounds remaining. In qualifying, with seven pole positions, it goes to Schumacher by 24 points from Juan Pablo Montoya, who himself gets seven pole positions. Ferrari won their fourth consecutive Constructors title by 129 points from Williams and now win their second consecutive title by 49 points. The bottom seven teams take just 12 points and Jordan go from sixth to fourth. The qualifying format was revised once again in 2003. The format introduced in 1996 had been criticised as it was commonplace for drivers to sit in the garage until the last minute and go out later in the session when the track had been fully rubbered in. It now returned to two sessions held on Friday and Saturday respectively, but in each of them, each driver got just one lap to set a time, done in reverse championship order on the Friday, and then in reverse order of the lap times from Friday on the Saturday, one after the other, and their Saturday times had to be set on their starting race fuel levels. This meant that all teams and sponsors got equal TV coverage and raised the stakes as you had only one chance to set a good time. The first points change in 12 years came also in 2003, with the top eight now getting points. Schumacher got a strong challenge from Kimi Raikkonen and Juan Pablo Montoya that year, but came through to take his record-breaking sixth driver's title by two points from Raikkonen. Qualifying now, and do my eyes deceive me or is Rubens Barrichello champion? Yes, with three pole positions, Barrichello takes the title by three points from Schumacher, who had five pole positions. Kimi Raikkonen slumps from 2nd to 5th, and Olivier Parnis jumps from 15th to 9th. Ferrari's win in the Constructors' Championship goes from 14 points over Williams to 26 points. Renault take 3rd from McLaren, and Toyota jump from 8th to 5th. A small revision came to the new qualifying format in 2004, as both sessions were now held on Saturday. Schumacher was back on top in 2004 and won his 7th Drivers' Championship by 34 points from teammate Rubens Barrichello. In qualifying, with 8 pole positions, he takes his 5th title by 34 points from Barrichello once again. Ferrari's 6th consecutive Constructors' title goes from being won by 143 points from BAR to their 4th consecutive title by 96 points from BAR, and Williams take 3rd from Renault. The qualifying format was changed yet again in 2005. The one-shot qualifying had received criticism of its own, as the weather could have drastic effects on the ever-changing track conditions, most exemplified by Jos Verstappen getting provisional pole position in a Minardi in 2003, as by the time he set his lap time on the Friday, the once wet circuit was now dry, only to then qualify at the back as usual in the dry Saturday session. It was also open to manipulation, as Michael Schumacher admitted that at Silverstone in 2004, he had deliberately spun in the first session in order to go out early in the second in anticipation of rain that would have hampered his lap time if he had gone out last. So now, a new aggregate system was introduced of a one-lap session on Saturday, run in reverse order of the results of the previous race, and a second one on Sunday morning on race fuel, with both lap times being added together. This, however, was very unpopular and was abandoned after only six races, and it was changed to a single one-lap session on Saturday run on race fuel. Michael Schumacher and Ferrari's dominance came to an end in 2005, and Fernando Alonso and Kimi Raikkonen fought for the title, with Alonso winning it by 21 points after Raikkonen retired three times from the lead and all three times handed the win to Alonso. In qualifying, with six pole positions, Alonso now wins it by just one point, and Jarno truly skyrockets from seventh to third. Renault's nine-point win over McLaren in the Constructors' battle increases to 17 points, becoming their fourth Constructors' title and first in 23 years, and Ferrari dropped from third to sixth. In 2006, 
The qualifying format was changed to the current system that we know and love today, whereby drivers had unlimited laps, but it would be split into three sessions, and anywhere from the slowest five drivers to the slowest seven drivers in each of the first two sessions would be eliminated, and the top ten would then battle for pole position in the third, but on race fuel. But it did involve a bizarre fuel credit system where the more fuel you burned in Q3, the more that was allotted to you for the race start. Michael Schumacher tried to take the title back in 2006, but ultimately failed, and Alonso took his second driver's title by 13 points. In qualifying, Alonso goes from winning one title by one point to losing the next by one point, and with four pole positions, Schumacher takes his sixth title, even with his disqualification in Monaco, matching Fangio and Senna before bowing out. Renault also lose the Constructors' title, and Ferrari beat them by 25 points. Two thousand and seven was marked by the titanic battle between defending champion Fernando Alonso and the rookie Lewis Hamilton. Their own internal squabbles and the fallout of the Spygate scandal meant Kimi Raikkonen came from behind to take the title by one point from both drivers. In qualifying, with six pole positions, Hamilton takes the title by a very comfortable sixteen points from Felipe Massa, becoming the first rookie champion since Juan Manuel Fangio in nineteen fifty, and Raikkonen drops all the way to fourth. Ferrari comfortably took the Constructors' title by 103 points from BMW Sauber after McLaren had a large number of their points deducted and were then excluded from the championship. In qualifying, rules are rules, McLaren still stay disqualified and Ferrari take the title by 115 points from BMW Sauber. In 2008, the fuel credit system in Q3 was abandoned and drivers could no longer add fuel after Q3, but still had to do Q3 on race fuel. Felipe Massa and Lewis Hamilton went back and forth in 2008, and for about 40 seconds it looked as if Massa was champion, until Hamilton passed Timo Is That Glock at the last corner of the last lap of the last race to take his first title by one point. In qualifying, with six pole positions, Massa now takes the title by two points. Ferrari go from winning the Constructors' title by 21 points from McLaren to winning by 15 points, and Red Bull managed to beat junior team Toro Rosso. Two thousand and nine was the fairy tale year where Honda rose from the ashes as Braun GP and took the Constructors' title and the Drivers' title with Jensen Button by 11 points from Sebastian Vettel. In qualifying, with four pole positions, Vettel takes the title by 17 points of Rubens Barrichello. Braun GP also took the Constructors' title by 18.5 points from Red Bull, but they now win it by just one point. Toyota take fourth from Ferrari, and BMW Sauber plunder it from sixth to ninth. There are some interesting changes in the 2000s. Michael Schumacher loses a title to Rubens Barrichello but then gains one from Fernando Alonso, Lewis Hamilton loses a title to Felipe Massa but gains one from Kimi Raikkonen, and Jensen Button loses his title to Sebastian Vettel. Ferrari as well lose a title to McLaren but gain one from Renault. The abandonment of in-race refuelling in 2010 meant Q3 was no longer done on race fuel, but now the top 10 had to start the race on the tyres they set their best Q3 time on. The next major change to the points system also came in 2010, expanding points for the top 10 finishers and giving more than three times as many points for a win as in 1950. 2010 itself saw a record-breaking four drivers in contention for the title at the final round, which eventually went to Sebastian Vettel by four points from Fernando Alonso. In qualifying, with nine pole positions, Vettel breezes to his second title by 48 points from teammate Mark Webber. Red Bull took their first Constructors' title by 44 points from McLaren, which increases to a gargantuan 343 points, and McLaren beat Ferrari to second by just five points. Sebastian Vettel dominated in 2011 to take his second title by 122 points from Jensen Button with four rounds remaining. In qualifying, with a record-breaking 15 pole positions, this becomes his third title by 157 points from Mark Webber. Red Bull breeze to their second Constructors title by 153 points over McLaren, which now becomes 233 points.
2012 saw seven different winners in the first seven races and eventually went down to the wire between Sebastian Vettel and Fernando Alonso and saw Vettel take his third consecutive title by three points. In qualifying, with seven pole positions, Lewis Hamilton instead takes his second title by a very comfortable 50 points, even when factoring in his disqualification in Barcelona. Michael Schumacher keeps his pole position in Monaco and so jumps from 13th to 8th, Kimi Raikkonen goes from 3rd to 6th and Felipe Massa drops from 7th to 11th. Red Bull took their third consecutive Constructors title by 60 points from Ferrari, but they now lose this as well to McLaren by just 9 points. Ferrari dropped from 2nd to 4th and Williams dropped from 8th to 6th. In 2013, Sebastian Vettel won an unprecedented nine consecutive races and took his fourth consecutive title by 155 points from Fernando Alonso with three rounds remaining. In qualifying, with nine pole positions, he takes the title by 72 points from Lewis Hamilton and Alonso drops from second to fifth. Red Bull won the Constructors' title by 236 points from Mercedes and now do by just 70 points. Sauber jump from 7th to 5th, and Caterham take the critical 10th from Marussia. In 2014, a small revision to qualifying came as the top 10 now had to start the race on the tyres they set their best lap time in Q2 on. 2014 also saw the advent of the hybrid era, and it was Mercedes who cracked the code and came out on top. The title was between Mercedes teammates Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg, and Hamilton eventually took his second driver's title by 67 points after the controversial employment of double points at the season finale in Abu Dhabi. In qualifying, with 11 pole positions, it goes to Rosberg by a very comfortable 82 points, and Felipe Massa skyrockets from 7th to 3rd. Mercedes' first constructors' victory came by 296 points from Red Bull, which increases to 421 points from Williams. Lewis Hamilton took his third title relatively comfortably in 2015 by 59 points from Nico Rosberg, with three rounds remaining. In qualifying, with 11 pole positions, this becomes 52 points. Mercedes' 275-point winning margin over Ferrari in the Constructors' Championship increases to 372 points, and they score 770 points out of a possible 817, and McLaren failed to score a single point for the first time since 1983. In 2016, a new elimination-style qualifying format was introduced, where every 90 seconds, whoever was slowest on the timesheets would be eliminated immediately. This drew immediate criticism, however, as instead of drivers setting continuous laps as was hoped, there were instead huge gaps where no one set any times if they were at no danger of being eliminated, and it was abandoned after just two races. The Mercedes machinery was so equal that it allowed Nico Rosberg to beat Lewis Hamilton by five points. In qualifying, with 8 pole positions, he takes his second title by 48 points, despite Hamilton having 11 pole positions. Mercedes beat Red Bull by 297 points in the Constructors' Championship, which increases to 372 points once again, this time over Ferrari who beat Red Bull by just 2 points. Large technical changes in 2017 to increase downforce took away most of Mercedes' advantage, and Lewis Hamilton was caught in a close title battle with Sebastian Vettel, but broke ahead in the latter stages and took his fourth driver's title by 46 points, with two rounds remaining. In qualifying, with 11 pole positions, this decreases to 37 points. Mercedes' fourth consecutive constructors title was won by 146 points from Ferrari, which drops to 93 points, Renault take fifth from Williams, and McLaren and Toro Rosso swap positions. Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel went head-to-head -head once again in 2018 in the battle for five, and Vettel's campaign went off the rails once again and Hamilton took his fifth title by 88 points with two rounds remaining. In qualifying, with 11 pole positions once again, this decreases to 59 points and Roman Grosjean skyrockets from 14th to best of the rest in 7th. Mercedes won their 5th Constructors title by a relatively narrow 84 points from Ferrari, which remains 84 points. Haas comfortably finished best of the rest in 4th and McLaren dropped from 6th to 9th. A 
A smaller revision to the points system came in 2019 with the return of a point for fastest lap. 2019 began with Lewis Hamilton storming off in the first half of the season and then receiving challenges from Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc in the second half, but still comfortably coming out on top to take his sixth driver's title by 87 points from teammate Valtteri Bottas with two rounds remaining. In qualifying, with five pole positions, he takes it by just 31 points. Leclerc goes from fourth to third with seven pole positions and Verstappen drops to fifth. Constructors' title number six for Mercedes goes from being won by 235 points from Ferrari to 111 points, and Haas go from ninth to sixth. So, in the 2010s, there are a few changes again. Sebastian Vettel and Red Bull lose the 2012 titles to Lewis Hamilton and McLaren respectively, and Nico Rosberg takes the 2014 title from Hamilton. Twenty twenty saw a shortened and heavily revised calendar in the wake of the COVID nineteen pandemic that also saw most races being run behind closed doors. Lewis Hamilton was unstoppable and broke Michael Schumacher's record for most Grand Prix victories and tied with him for most championships with his seventh title taken by one hundred and twenty four points from teammate Valtteri Bottas with three rounds remaining. In qualifying, with 10 pole positions, he takes his seventh title by just 21 points, breaking Juan Manuel Fangio's 63-year-old record in the process, also meaning he could have potentially lost the title in Abu Dhabi if Bottas had got pole and he was outside the top 10. Alexander Albon jumps from 7th to 4th, and Lance Stroll goes from 11th to 8th. Mercedes took their seventh consecutive constructors' title by 254 points from Red Bull, which increases to 296 points, and they score 671 points out of a possible 731. Racing Point take third from McLaren, and George Russell's efforts mean Williams take ninth from Haas. Twenty twenty one is the one we all remember, the battle between Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen that went down to the last lap of the last race and fell to Verstappen by eight points. That year saw the advent of sprint races, whereby qualifying now took place on Friday evening in place of FP2 to determine the grid order for the sprint race, FP3 would then run as usual on Saturday morning, with Park Ferme in effect, and then the sprint race was held on Sunday afternoon, with three points for first, two for second and one for third, and the results of this determined the starting grid on Sunday. In qualifying, not counting sprint race results as qualifying, with nine pole positions, the title still goes to Verstappen by just five points. Hamilton keeps his pole position at Istanbul, but is still disqualified at Interlagos. Charles Leclerc, who keeps his pole position at Monaco, jumps from seventh to fourth. Despite losing the driver's title, Mercedes did take an historic eighth consecutive constructor's title by 28 points from Red Bull, and they now do by a much more comfortable 110 points. In 2022, the Q2 tyre rule was abandoned, and the top 10 could now start the race on any tyre of their choosing. 2022 also saw the return of ground effect, and Ferrari were back on form and Charles Leclerc took an early lead in the championship, but this quickly fell off the rails and Max Verstappen claimed his second title by 146 points from Leclerc, with four rounds remaining. In qualifying, with seven pole positions, it still goes to Verstappen by just three points. Leclerc, with nine pole positions, leads the entire championship at one point by over 50 points until the final round, and comes within four hundredths of a second of being champion. Red Bull comfortably took the Constructors title by 205 points from Ferrari, but Ferrari now take their first title in 14 years by 49 points. Haas go from 8th to 6th, and Aston Martin drop from 7th to 9th. In 2023, the sprint format has been revised once again. The original system received criticism for lack of drama in the sprint races, as nobody wanted to jeopardise their starting positions on Sunday, and FP3 was rendered essentially pointless as no setup changes could be made. So instead, the main qualifying session takes place on Friday evening in place of FP2 to determine Sunday's grid, and on Saturday, a separate sprint qualifying is held in place of FP3 to determine the grid for the sprint race held later that afternoon, and points now go from 8 for 1st to 1 for 8th. 2023 is obviously still ongoing, but let's see how things look as of the Austrian Grand Prix. 
Unsurprisingly, with six pole positions from nine races, not including sprint qualifying, Verstappen is sitting pretty at the top, 61 points ahead of Fernando Alonso, Sergio Perez is fifth, and Charles Leclerc is now fourth. On the constructors' front, Red Bull have a 50-point lead over Ferrari, Mercedes are just behind Aston Martin in fourth, and Alfa Romeo dropped to tenth. So, as we can see, the historical record gets turned on its head. Giuseppe Farina, Graham Hill, Denny Holm, Jody Schechter, Keke Rosberg, Kimi Raikkonen and Jensen Button all lose their status as champions. And Sterling Moss, Chris Amon, Ronnie Peterson, Jacques Lafitte, Patrick Tombe, Rubens Barrichello and Felipe Massa are all new champions. Alain Prost takes a bit of a beating as he goes from four titles to two, one of which is won by the thinnest of margins, spaced 11 years apart, and Jack Brabham loses two of his three titles. Niki Lauda meets his match in the form of James Hunt, and Alonso loses his second title. The real stars of the show are the usual suspects. Ayrton Senna doubles his title count, Jim Clark more than doubles his, and Lewis Hamilton stands alone on seven. On the constructors' front, BRM, Brabham, Matra and Benetton all lose their titles. Renault prove themselves the dominant force in the ground effect era by virtue of their turbo engines. Red Bull lose two titles. Williams lose one, but Lotus and McLaren gain two. So, to end, here are the top 10 drivers ranked by qualifying career points using the modern points system. and all real-life champions ranked by qualifying career points using the modern points system. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram and TikTok at brook underscore F1. A huge shout out as well to my Patreon subscribers, especially my newest subscriber Wimbo F1. Do subscribe to my Patreon if you want early access to audio-only versions of each video, as well as a few videos that YouTube won't allow me to put up, and I'll see you all next time.